So this is our first night. And why do we call tonight Seek? This is this word that's been in my, sitting in my spirit all January and February. And I just like, you know what? I don't know about you guys, but I, after a year like last year, I want to seek the Lord. I want to seek the Lord. I want to go to the, to the holy place, to the holy of holies. I want to find Him while He can be found. And there's a couple of scriptures that just really frame this for me. Isaiah 55, 6 says, Seek the Lord while He may be found. I guess the alternative is there's times when He may not be found. It's interesting. While He may be found, seek the Lord. So there's a sense of there's times, Kairos times, times when God makes Himself available to be found. Anointed times, a special favour and blessing and grace. The Holy Spirit is always with us. The Lord is always with us. But for some reason, we're going to break this open tonight and we're going to, I want to discuss what we call, what gets called the anointing. What is this word? What's the anointing? And, but there's times to seek the Lord. Special times of favour. In the church, we have seasons. We're in one now. It's called Lent. And we have ebbs and flows. Hosea 10, 12 says, Break up your fellow ground. This is a great one for now. In the middle of Lent, as we, as we come back to the Lord with all our hearts, rending our hearts, not our garments. Break up your fellow ground. And as a farmer, I love this image because you can imagine the, 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 the dirt and, and the plough just digging into the dirt and turning it over. And the great thing about when you turn over soil is it smells rich and there's beautiful rich soil under there. And then you open up the soil for the rain to come down. It says, break up your fallow ground for it is time to seek the Lord. It's time to seek the Lord, brothers and sisters. I didn't care if there was five people who came tonight. I was going to seek the Lord with those five. And if another 15 come in, great. I don't care. It's all about it's time to seek the Lord. And whoever here, you are here. And I believe you're in the right place tonight. And, and it's not a mistake. that The Lord has called you here. It's time to seek the Lord that He may come. And I love this. And reign. Rain righteousness. I love the rain we've had in the last two weeks. Obviously, autumn is moving in. Love the showers. Love rain. Love thunder. But the Lord wants to rain righteousness on us, but we need to prepare our hearts to break up the fallow ground. Hosea 6.3 says, Let us know. Let us press on to know the Lord. It's not talking about know the Lord in some sort of book or some sort of theological understanding, but know Him in the intimacy of knowing Him, knowing Him as a friend. Like Moses knew him face to face as a friend talks with his friend. Let us press on to know the Lord. Who here wants to know the Lord in that way? To know him as a, as a man or a woman knows their friend. You know when you go and have coffee with a friend and you, like my wife has some friends and when girlfriends and when they go and catch coffee after like four hours I say, how was it? And she says, we just scratched the surface. I'm like, I don't know how you do it. Ask me, we got dot points. Boom, boom, boom. So, cool. How's the golf? Let us press on to know the Lord in that deep friend, friendship way. We're, we, we, he's, we're known by Him and He's known by us. And it says, He will come to us like the showers, like the spring rains that water the earth. The showers, like the spring rains that water the earth. I think it's a beautiful imagery. Beautiful imagery. Seeking the Lord and as we seek the Lord, the rains will come. So when you hear people talking about, you know, I sense there's anointing in the room. I, I remember coming into circles where there was, uh, you know, people who are really into the Holy Spirit and they, they had their own lingo. And I didn't know this lingo, but you start, you start to pick up on it. You know, it's like, oh yeah. And this was one of the lingos that I had to try and work out what it meant. Yeah, there was a real anointing tonight. Oh, I could sense a real anointing tonight. I just didn't know what that meant. And uh, certainly there's a real biblical understanding of anointing was the anointing of oil when people were commissioned for leadership. Oil was poured over them. But it wasn't just oil. It was an understanding in the anointing with oil was really an anointing of the Holy Spirit, the rich oil of the Holy Spirit for their leadership. And now as believers, we're all anointed in Jesus Christ. Christ means the anointed one. So the anointed one has an anointing for all of us because if we're baptised in Him, we're baptised in, into the same anointing of the Holy Spirit that He had. That should blow your mind, shouldn't it, Donna? Hey, so when we're talking about the anointing of the Spirit or a special anointing, I've looked up the Pat Keedy Dictionary of Spiritual Terms, and actually I made it up. And this is how I described it tonight. A special concentration of grace. We all have an anointing 
like the Scriptures say. But when you hear this lingo, it said, I sense an anointing over this person. They're talking about something a little bit different here. A special concentration of grace, a thickening of the Spirit in one place or over one person, like the condensation of a cloud growing heavy with weight. So that's how I would, that's my summary for you. That's how I've understood this. Don't quote me. No, quote me if you like. But, you know, what's the purpose? If, what am I talking about there? That's what I'm trying to talk about. And we're going to talk about the cloud of anointing tonight. And as we seek the Lord, I think this image will really help us. So what's, what's the purpose of this thickening of grace? This, this thickening like a cloud gathering. Well, it's so that the, so that the heavens would open. So that what the prophets prayed for, we would experience that the heavens may rend, as Isaiah said, that the springs, rains may come, as, as those scriptures from Hosea said, and that times of refreshing would come from the Lord. You know, when after the day of Pentecost, and Peter was speaking to the Sanhedrin, to the religious leaders, he says, you know, times of refreshing are going to be poured out. Times of refreshing, like that spring rain that God wants to rain upon His church. And I don't know about you, but I desire the rain of the Spirit to fall again in the Catholic Church. I desire the, the rain of the spring rain of the Holy Spirit to fall in the nation of Australia. There's a lot of dry ground if you haven't looked around recently. There's a lot of dry hearts and it's not their fault. They're just parched and no one's telling them the good news about the Saviour. And man, we have the opportunity who, who know the amazing truth to pray for that spring rain to usher it in so that lives may be healed and restored. Amen? Amen. So I'm going to dig into just a little bit. 1 Kings 18. Someone hold me up. I don't want to go longer than 10 minutes. God, gee, I'll try my best. 1 Kings chapter 18, starting in verse 41, there's a prophet called Elijah. And I don't care if you're one of the, you know, you've been in the church, you've been in the renewal for years, and you're like, I know this one. Yep, heard this one. It's Elijah on Mount Carmel. I know where he's going. Even if you know where I'm going, pretend you don't and just come with me for a little walk. You know, there was a three-year drought uh, and, and Elijah was a prophet who the Lord said, the drought's going to happen when you speak the word. So he said, there's going to be a drought and the drought began and Elijah went into hiding and uh, the people, livestock was dying. It was a dry time. And, and then they, just before this scripture, there was a big contest between Elijah and the prophets of Baal, who was another God that they were all worshipping. And fire came down from heaven lit up the sacrifice, you know, and uh, they were able to say, now we know who the true God is, the one who answers by fire. He is the Lord. So this amazing event had just happened, right? And all the people go, yes, we know who the true Lord is. But there was one question left unanswered. What about the drought? It hadn't rained for three years. The people were thirsty. The people were suffering. They knew who the Lord was. Now he'd answer by fire, but what about the rain? And uh, in verse 43, Elijah says to Ahab, Ahab was the king. He says to Ahab, go and eat and drink, for I hear the sound of rushing rain. I hear the sound of rushing rain. Did he see the sound of rushing rain? No, you can't see the sound of anything. He heard the sound of it, but it wasn't raining yet. And I love this. As I read this line, I said, that's like when we sense something in our spirit before it happens. And faith faith is described in the, in the Bible as uh, what we can't see it, it's believing what we can't see it to the point where it's all, we consider it done and dusted, certain. So faith is being certain of what is not seen. And here Elijah is saying, go and eat and drink, pretty much because it may as well be raining because I can sense it in my spirit. I can hear the sound of rushing waters. When we're facing difficult times, when you're facing difficult times, can you still hear the sound of rushing waters or is the sounds of the world drowning out to the point where you start to give up that it actually will rain? You wouldn't be alone, you wouldn't be alone if you felt like, yeah, I've given in to discouragement from time to time. I've given in to discouragement over the last 12 months. Totally fine. We all understand there's times where we just dips and the enemy gets us and we just believe the lies and we go crashing and, uh, you know, we're human. The Lord wants to encourage us tonight. What are we listening to? What voice are we listening to? And verse 42 then says, So Ahab went off to eat and drink. This is an interesting point. 
Ahab went off to eat and drink, but Elijah climbed to the top of Mount Carmel. Two different directions going here. Ahab could represent just what the rest of the world is doing. It's Friday night. I mean, I've got family doing lots of different things, but in that broader sense, it's Friday night. The, the world is doing a whole lot of different things, but why are you here? You're joining Elijah in that sense. You've made a choice to climb the mountain, to set yourself apart, and that's what he's doing here. He chooses to set himself apart to seek the Lord. He's, he's heard the sound in his spirit of the rushing waters, but he's not going to leave it there. He says to Ahab, you go off and eat and drink, but I'm going to climb Mount Carmel. I'm set apart to be different. The saints of God means being sanctified, means being set apart to be different. And we're called not just tonight, but in our lives, brothers and sisters, to set ourselves apart to seek the Lord while he may be found. That's what saints are. They're set apart people. And no matter how holy you are or you aren't, you're a saint of God. You're set, you're, if you're, you set yourself apart, for the Lord. Amen. That's what tonight's about. That's what we're going to be doing. And I love this. He went off to eat and drink. Elijah climbed to the top of Mount Carmel, bent down on the ground and put his face between his knees. Like repentance. When was the last time you got down on your knees and, and put your face between your knees and, and written you prayed in that way? You know, it's, it's a feeling that I did, unless your knees, if your knees can't do it, don't worry. No pressure here. Physical challenge. But if you're up for it, when you go home, try it this weekend. Find somewhere, close the door behind you like Jesus said, and get low, get low, get close to the earth. There's something about being humble before the Lord, which He loves, and He sees the humility and He responds to some, anyone who humbles themselves like a little child. Beautiful. Verse 43, then Elijah says to his servant, he took his servant up with him and he says, go and look. So first he could hear it, but then he said to his servant, go and look toward the sea. He's hoping it'll rain. Go and look towards the sea. The servant comes back and says, there's nothing. How many times have you needed an answer from God? And you said, okay, God, I'm going to give you one chance. I'm going to climb the mountain. I'm going to set myself apart. I'm going to pray, but I'm going to give you one chance. So I'm going to pray once. If it doesn't happen, well, stuff you. You know, I get, you, you, know you blew it. Look at the faith of Elijah. There's nothing. Seven times it says, he sent his servant back to keep checking while he was down on the ground praying, praying for the rain, praying for the cloud to appear that had not appeared, couldn't see it yet. Seven times and seven times the servant's coming back saying, still nothing. How discouraged do you think he would? Do you think on the sixth time he was like, seriously? How many of you are in your sixth time right now? How many of you are in a sixth season right now? You've been asking God for something for a long time, and the fruit is not on the tree, and you're going, Lord, really? Come on. Anyone got children? You've been praying prayers like that for quite a while. Really? Come on. And the Lord just really wants to encourage us to say, go back, stay on your knees, continue to seek me at my face. I will not disappoint you. I'm not a God who's trying to play tricks on you. So, the seventh time, the servant reported, a cloud as small as a man's hand is rising from the sea. That's pretty small. So he put his hand up there and he saw, it's a, it's a small cloud as big as a man's hand is rising from the sea. And Elijah knew, that's it. Did he wait until the cloud came in? He didn't need to do it. He prayed. All he had to see was the sign. It was the sign of the cloud still in the distance. And he, by faith he knew, that's good enough for me. And he went down to Ahab and he said, go back. You go, go and tell Ahab, hitch up your chariot and go down before the rain stops you. This rain is going to be so strong, you'll get bogged in it. Meanwhile, the sky grew black with clouds. The wind rose and a heavy rain started falling. It's a lovely story. It's a lovely story, but it's more than a lovely story. It's a prophetic story for you and me, for how are we meant to seek the Lord? How persevering are we meant to be when we seek the Lord, when we set ourselves apart from Him? Do we give up after the first time, the second or the third or the fourth or the fifth or the sixth? And we know seven is just a, a symbol of completeness. Like Jesus said, you know, how, Peter said, how, much, how many times should I forgive my brother? And Jesus says, I tell you not seven times, but 70 times seven. Like just no matter how often He keeps on hurting you, Go back again and again and again. No matter how long it takes for your prayer to get answered, I know some of you are holding on tight to some really necessary prayers tonight. 
Keep going back. Don't believe the lie that the Lord is ignoring you, doesn't care about you, doesn't love you and doesn't want to answer your prayer. It's not true. But when the Son of Man comes, will He find faith on the earth? And I want to be one of those persons who put up my hand and says, yes, Lord, you will. You will. The cloud, I see in this cloud a beautiful image of this thing called the anointing, which we in charismatic circles like to talk about. But it's like, I'll call it the cloud of anointing, the cloud of Carmel. It's the growing, gathering, drought-breaking presence of the Holy Spirit. And doesn't our church need that? A growing, gathering, drought-breaking presence of the Holy Spirit, an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And we know it came 2,000 years ago as a Pentecost. Jesus rent the heavens and came down. The Holy Spirit rent the heavens and came down. And it has been poured out upon the church. But we continually, like the seasons of the church, like the seasons of the centuries, here we find ourselves with a new harvest before us in the 21st century in Brisbane, and it's time to seek the Lord again, for the rains to come down again. Amen? For revival. That these people be revived, stirred up, splash water in the face. You can't splash water in the face unless there's some water falling from the sky. So all I want before we go into worship again, and Ben, I hope you're around because we're going to kick off real soon. There you go. I love that hint. The cloud of anointing just doesn't come from nowhere. It grows in response to devoted, set apart, fervent, persevering prayer. If you want to see a cloud of anointing, uh, the heavens break open and the Catholic Church be drenched in the rain of the Holy Spirit and go, oh my God, where are all these miracles coming from? When was the last time you saw a miracle? Well, they can start tonight. And maybe we need to continue to seek the Lord and pray for His, the thickening, condensing presence of the Holy Spirit. To, to, we, we're like Elijah, we're beckoning it to grow. Can you see it on the horizon? Maybe you can't see it yet. But what we can do is get on our knees and we can say, Lord, we can sense it in our spirit. We can hear the sound. Lord, we're going to pray. We want to see the cloud come. Lord, bring your anointing. Bring your revival. Bring that special presence of your Holy Spirit, which we know is with us all the time. But for some reason, there's times. There's times of revival. There's times of outpouring. And it's up to us to be the intercessors who go, that's not going to come from nowhere. We're going to be the people who are going to pray into that and intercede in that. And if it happens in 10 years from now, it'll be because we committed ourselves to start tonight. And if it happens in three months from now, it'll be because we committed ourselves to start tonight. Continually, continually breaking the fallow ground, praying for the rain of heaven to fall down. Because we need it, you need it. And the people in your circles and your world and my circles and our world they need it as well. Man, I don't want to be a dry well. I, don't want, I want to be someone whose well has got water in it so I can pull out a cup and give someone something to drink. Anyone else? Yeah. Isaiah 64 says, Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down. Just before it, it says in Isaiah 63, 11, Where is he? Like the prophet is going, you could imagine the prophet now in the church talking like this, Where is he? Where is he who set his Holy Spirit among them? who sent His glorious arm of power to be at Moses' right hand. They'd heard the stories of Moses. They'd heard the stories of deliverance. And now He's saying, where is He? It's like He's abandoned His people. And it can feel like that today. Where is He in your life? Where is He in the Catholic Church? If you want to cry out with that sense of despair, don't leave it there. Move on to the next one. Oh Lord, that You would rend the heavens and come down. We know when the Lord rends the heaven and comes down, There is water for the thirsty. There is drink for those who are searching and lost. And we can all flow in the river of God's Spirit and offer the water of life to our world. Amen? So I just want to invite you to stand together. As I said, Shandy's available over there for any prophetic words that are going to go on. We're going to have time of worship. Let's just worship the Lord. There's no rules in this time. I really encourage you to be open with your bodies, with with the charismatic gifts. If you've never sung in the gift, using the gifts of tongues before, it's just a way of singing a, in a spiritual language to God. It's a gift that the Holy Spirit can give. So be open to that. Any sounds that come out of your heart, let's allow the sound of worship to fill this room. Right now, Lord, we, we set ourselves aside. We climb the mountain, really, the mountain that is Christ. And we say, Lord, You have already conquered. You've already conquered sin and death on the cross. You've already poured out Your Spirit. But Lord, we pray, send your Spirit again. 
Send your Spirit in a new way upon us. Not just upon us, Lord, but for our families, for our friends, for, for our community, for our church, for this nation. Come, Holy Spirit, we beckon you. Not, not desperate like we don't believe you will, but with confidence. Confidence that you're on your way. Confidence that you're drawing nearer. Confidence that you're going to bring the cloud. Confident that revival will come. Confident that the cloud will grow bigger in Jesus' name. Amen.